Larry's already got it ready. He's rolling. There are some papers in the back. Thank you, Terry. Uh, if you'd like a paper to follow along tonight, it's a short one. That doesn't mean we'll be out here early. It's just a short outline. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to make any guarantees. <laughs> Shut up, Roger. <laughs> We're not recording yet, are we? <laughs> Heidi, quit causing problems. <laughs> Amen. In the midst of all my medical procedures I have going on, I'd, I, I didn't mention it tonight, but I'd, I'd ask you to pray too. I have a funeral to do on Saturday. Uh, funeral from the wheelchair, but that's all right. Um, but that's for uh, actually the, the, the Anna that Roger was talking about earlier. It's for her husband's cousin. And they moved to town, and he passed away, so I'm going to be doing that for them. They actually, the, the sisters and the husband were in church Sunday. And uh, so just a contact. I didn't know them. They didn't know me, but the Lord's opened doors, and we're thankful for that. Uh, and then I think next Thursday, Lord willing, and if surgery is not scheduled, um, we'll be doing the service for uh, Troy's brother as well. And so uh, we're just looking again to, to be a blessing to people. I don't know him. They don't know me, but I know Troy. So, you know, good enough, right? Yeah, amen. Amen. And so we're just praying the Lord works through all those things. You know, we want to be a blessing, and it's not always convenient, but uh, you just do what God enables you to do. And uh, so we're looking forward to trying to be a blessing to that family as well and an encouragement. And again, just see what God does from that. So, amen. All right, well, we're going to conclude our series tonight because I'm ready to get to another one, all right? <laughs> no, I wanted to finish up with the model prayer, which we've been in the last two weeks I taught, which was like a month ago. Uh, but uh, we're going to look at the final couple verses here of the Lord's Prayer. We've been thinking about teaching us to pray. Uh, and we're going to look at just the topic is simply requests. What are we asking for? What should we ask for? Uh, is it okay to ask for? Uh, those types of things we're going to look at. So we'll be in Luke chapter 11. This is just kind of the shorter version of it, uh, verses 1 through 4. And if you've got a Bible, you can follow along. If not, it's on the screen there for you. And you can follow along that way as well. But uh, scripture says this, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, Why pray, or when ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven. We've covered that. Uh, the heaven, the issue, why, why he pointed it out. Hallowed be thy name. We, we, just, we studied that, what that meant. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done is in heaven, so in earth. And we, talk, we cover, recovered that about his kingdom now, his coming kingdom. We mentioned those things. Now we'll focus on verse 3 and 4 tonight. Uh, give us day by day our what? Daily. Daily bread. Now again, there's, there's a reason for, I believe, every word of scripture, okay? And I believe that daily is in there for a reason. We'll talk about that in a minute. Verse number 4, and forgive us our sins... For we also forgive for everyone that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And of course, it's worded a little bit differently in, in Matthew, but uh, this kind of gives the gist of what we want to talk about today. This last two verses here of the, of the model prayer that the Lord gives his disciples, again, they could have asked Jesus for anything, anything, right? And, and you hear one request, and what is it? Teach us to pray. Now again, they're, they're living with him. You know, they're working with him side by side. Uh, they're in his time frame. They can physically touch him. We don't, we don't have that, all right? He's not a physical uh, being that we can touch right now, okay? And, and so if they figured it was that important when they were with him, how much more important do you think it is for us who don't have him? I mean, he, he's spiritually with us, but not right here with us. It's a pretty big deal. And so the disciples say, teach us to pray. These last two verses, again, we've seen the, we've seen the explanation of the first part. Uh, all the way up to, you know, thy will be done in heaven as it is in earth. Uh, these two verses now are going to teach us and put emphasis on praying for both physical needs and spiritual needs. 
And we'll talk about that a little bit tonight. So uh, I've given you kind of the whole outline already, at least the first two main points. So the first one is this, request for physical needs. Physical needs. You know, if you really think about prayer, think about our prayer time tonight, okay? We just, we just had a, t- a season of prayer there. A couple of us prayed. How much of our prayer tonight was for physical needs? Pretty much all of it tonight, right? And I, I, that's not always the case because sometimes you have a spiritual thing or, or, or you know, uh, other type of things. But, but tonight, pretty much the whole focus was on, was on physical needs of people. Is it wrong to ask for our physical needs? No, no. In fact, God tells us to ask <laughs> for our needs. Uh, requests, though, and, and this is the way I like to look at it. When I pray specifically to God in my prayer time, I don't like for my requests to be the heaviest part of my prayer. Okay, uh, I, I may ask, I may have to ask, you know, for a dozen things, but in doing so, I will also make sure I, that I top in that with praise, uh, with, with adoration, with just spending time with him and all those types of things. Uh, but it seems like physical needs are, are a huge part of our prayer lives. Um, think about it this way. How many of you know somebody and the only time they ever call you is when they need something? Huh? Do, do you think that, do you think that, Jesus might ever feel that way? Man, the only time you talk to me is when you need something. Now, I'm glad that even if that's the case, he still listens and still answers. Amen? But don't you think he would rather have a relationship through prayer? And not just, a, I, got, I got a need today, Lord. Uh, you, ever, you ever just go to God sometime and just say, Lord, I'm not going to ask for anything. I'm not going to ask for anything right now. I just want to praise you. I just want to spend time in your presence. Physical needs. Again, it's not wrong to ask for. We see it pointed out here in these verses. Uh, we, we, we see Luke here, and of course Matthew as well. You, you see him pointing this, this particular thing out that it's okay. So look at this thought about requests for physical needs. And the first thing you see is our daily bread. Our daily bread. Now, this was written a long time ago, so it's not talking about the devotional that we put out on the back table. Okay, That's not what it's talking about, the daily bread there. All right, uh, Our daily bread. What, what is it talking about? Okay, food, food, our physical need of food. What else could we be talking about? Emotional needs? No, don't get spiritual. We'll get those in a minute. You're getting ahead of me, but that's okay. You're all right. right. Sustenance? I think if you really think about when when they they point this out, give us this day our daily bread, I think it's it's more of a a pointing daily to the little things, right? I mean, do, you, do any of you really wake up in, in the day and say, I'm not sure how I'm going to eat today? Nobody in this room. I mean, I know there are people in our world like that, but you're not like that. Uh, you didn't get up this morning and say, oh, man, I hope I have a pair of shoes to wear today, right? Uh, and so I think it's not just necessarily talking about physical bread, you know, the actual the, the bread that you eat. I think that's, that's implied here as well. But I think it's, it's, the, it's asking God not just for the big things, but making sure we include him in the little things. It's demonstrating a dependent attitude. I need you daily. And I need you for the, the little things, God. Not just the big things. Not just when I'm you know, in financial ruin. Or not just when my health has finally reached the breaking point. But God, I need you today just to guide my footsteps. God, I need you today. I'm going to talk to a coworker today. And I need you to help me say exactly the right words that would touch their lives. It's the little things. The little things. Our day-to-day activities. How many times do we take those things for granted? I'm, I'm not going to ask you to say yes or no tonight. But, but do you get up in the morning and say, God, God, guide me into what outfit I should wear today? I mean, to be honest, we probably most of us don't, right? I, I went to church. I had a, 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 an older couple in my church uh, in Indiana. And uh, we'd go out to eat with the, with the seniors all, all the time. But sometimes he'd go out with other couples. And we'd go out with them every now and then and just have a nice meal together. And uh, every time he invited somebody to eat or invited us to eat, before we ever left, before we ever planned, you know, we planned the day and the time, he would pray and say, God, what restaurant should I go to today? And I, he told me that one time. I was like, why? It's just food. And he was like, I want God's guidance in everything, even the little things. But those are things we kind of take for granted. I don't get up in the morning and say, oh, God, please make sure there's hot water today. Maybe I should, right? <laughs> I know it's going to come out unless the water heater's broken, right? But, but what's wrong with getting God involved in that? The little things, the little things. Uh, trusting God for the smallest details of my life. 
it gives me that intimate, personal relationship with him. It's not the, I'm going to beg him when I got something big. It's, God, I just want to talk to you daily, and so I'm just going to, I'm just going to do the little things. God, help me to get my shoes on today. That's a prayer request I have lately. <laughs> Amen? And help me to be able to get my sock on today. Little things. It may not mean anything to anybody else, but, but it's that building of that personal, intimate relationship with God. The little things. The little things. Uh, God cares for our needs. He says, cast how many of your cares on him? All, All your cares. He says he cares for the sparrows. How much more does he care for his children? Uh, he loves us. He gives us good things. Um, you know, even, here's the great thing about God. He gives us good things even when we aren't doing what we should. He's good to us even when we reject some part of his plan in our life, right? He's good. His provision uh, in answer to our request, of course, I think, first of all, requires that we ask in faith. We've been talking about that kind of the whole series through. There's got to be the faith that he's going to do what we ask. Um, God provides for us when we desire to do his will, we, we ask in faith, then he supplies the things that we need, like, like food, shelter, clothing, direction, those types of things, uh, and, 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 and even strength and guidance to live for him. He provides those things daily, daily. Um, you ever been in a position in your life where you felt like God wasn't meeting your daily needs? We've probably all been there. We've probably all been there. What are you doing, God? I'm not sure, I'm not sure you understand how this works, right? What about, what about um, Christians around the world that are in persecution? Yeah. Doesn't sound like their daily needs are being met. The homeless Christian, his da daily needs aren't being met, right? Here's the thing we have to understand. Sometimes God does allow us to, to endure a trial. Uh, and, and he might choose to withhold something that we feel like we should have daily and that we need. And in those cases, here's the good thing. He doesn't just say, deal with it. What does he say? My grace is sufficient. So if I'm going to withhold something from you that you feel like you need to test or to try your faith or to strengthen or to grow or to mold you uh, into what I need you to be, I'm still going to be with you through it. And, and my grace will be there to get you through. Uh, God has promised to give us the grace even in suffering. David testified to that in Psalm 37. Uh, he reminds us that God will never forsake us. And he'll never refuse to give us what we truly need. What, what, what does the psalmist say? Uh, he's never seed, seen his seed begging bread. God takes care of his children. So depending on God for our needs, number one is that building of that intimate relationship with him. But number two, it also brings him glory. It brings him glory. I have to admit I need him daily. Daily. Uh, I have to come to him empty if I expect him to fill me. Uh, he, he's full of everything. And if I want him to fill my life, I've got to present myself to him empty, right? You remember, you remember the story? i got a sermon I'll preach on this one day. It's really good. It's really good. I'm not quite finished with it, but it'll be good, all right? Uh, <laughs> well, in my eyes, anyways. Usually I say that, and it's a flop. But anyways, um, and, and you think about the, uh, the lady who was uh, in debt, and uh, she had no money, and she had the cruise of oil. You remember? And she started pouring that oil out, and God, of course, blessed it and continued. And she sent all the, bo the, the boys, the two boys she had before they got sold into slavery to pay her debt. She said, go borrow all the neighbor's vessels and bring them back so I can fill them, right? Did you notice that the boys didn't bring back full vessels? Yeah. Now, I would have brought back a vessel full of bacon and a vessel full of you know, chicken and a vessel full. I would have been getting the refrigerator vessels out of the fridge that had leftovers in them, but... They brought back empty vessels. Why? You can't fill something that's full. So when I enter God's presence for my daily requests, my daily needs, my, my hey, I'm growing in my intimate relationship, with, I've got to present myself as empty because if I'm full of me, he can't put him in. Does that make sense? Uh, so, so I've got to, to come empty knowing that he has what I need to fill me. Give me my daily needs, God, and fill me with what you want me to have today. So, so, so daily, daily bread. Secondly, uh, if you think about physical needs, then you also think about asking for our desires. Asking for our desires. Daily bread, that's our needs. That's our daily, hey, you know, guide me, Lord. Hey, God, I, I need this today. Can you provide this for me? Is it wrong to ask God for things that you want? <laughs> I mean, it, it, needs and wants are different, right? And that's where most people struggle. God didn't give me what I needed. No, you want it, and that's different than a need, okay? So we have to understand the distinction. But is it wrong to ask God even for our wants? I don't think so. And here's the thing, if my wants are in line with his will, he answers my wants as well. 
if they're not in line with his will, he's still going to answer. It's just going to be a different answer than I was expecting, right? I would love one day to have a convertible Corvette that I could drive down the road. I've been praying that for about 40 years. It must not be God's will because I don't have one, amen? Is it wrong to ask once in a while? <laughs> I want it because we won't get it, right? And so, so even bringing our wants, our desires to Christ, uh, when we approach God with a request or a desire, uh, here's, here's, here's the reasoning or the rationale for, for asking for our, our desires, okay? We have to think about why we want the request to be answered, okay? Now, when I pray for a convertible Corvette, you know the reason? Because I just want to be cool, I want to have something fast to drive down the highway that everybody looks at and says, look at that car. That's not a real good reason, is it? I'm not going to bring God glory for that. You know, I'm not going to glorify God with my new Corvette driving down the road to the top down. I'm going to glorify me. Yeah, yeah. And so, so when you think about asking for a request, here's a key thing to think about. Why do I want the request answered? Uh, you know, you think, of, you think of kids today. I need the newest phone. I need the iPhone 48. Or whatever number they're up to now, right? If I don't have that, I'm not, I just won't fit in with everybody else. I won't be as cool. I won't, what's the reason? I, 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 I want, I want, I want. I want to be accepted. I want to be popular. I want to be, the, you know, the, look, at my, look at my parents, whatever. Uh, you know, or, or, or maybe it's to uh, win a promotion at work. Why? Is it so that you can help and, and promote and to do better things at work? Or is it so that you can have a pay raise? You know, there, there's all kinds of things to look at. Why? We have to examine, first of all, our motive for wanting. Will it bring glory to me or will it bring glory to God? Am I asking out of selfishness? Am I asking to bring me self-happiness and self-fulfillment? Uh, which, by the way, if you think about it, happiness and fulfillment are things that only God really can provide. But is that why I'm asking? I want, I want to feel like I've, you know, I'm fulfilled. Am I trying to make life easier instead of allowing God to use my situation to grow me spiritually? God ever put you in a situation and your first prayer is, God, get me out of this. We've been there. God, if you'll take me out of this, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. You realize that maybe God has you in it, not so that you can say, God, make my life easier, but so that he can grow you spiritually in it. So why am I praying to get out of it? To, to, to make it easier? Or, or to, to, to see God... Uh, grow me. You see, see the difference? So you got to understand the reason. Before we ask God to give us things, let's make sure we look at why we want those things. Uh, again, there's nothing wrong with asking for things as long as the motive is correct in doing so. Uh, several people during Christ's ministry made uh, requests with the wrong motives. Anybody, anybody tell me one? Who went to Jesus with the request with the wrong motive? Yes. What? What? Okay. Yeah. Remember James and John's mom? I want my two boys to sit at the right and the left hand of Jesus. Was was that really to bring God glory? No. So her boys looked good, and she looked good. Okay. Uh, again, uh, the other disciples uh, grew indignant at that request. Uh, shortly, though, prior to that incident, they'd all been arguing over who was the greatest. If you'll remember. <laughs> And so Christ had to teach him a lesson. And so when she comes in and, and requests this, what does he say? No, 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 no. True leadership means serving. True greatness means being low. True, true, true humility means serving others. <laughs> and, and so he teaches them through that even. But a wrong request was made. How about, how about uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Uh, con, uh, well, Matthew 16 specifically. They, uh, they asked for a divine sign from Jesus to prove all the claims that he made about himself, who he was. They weren't willing to believe the evidence they already had. Jesus knew already they're going to refuse any other sign I give them anyways. They were being very hypocritical, uh, displaying a religious exterior with a cold heart uh, towards God anyways. And, and so God called them out on that. Why? R wrong motive for asking. So we need to ask for our daily, daily needs. Bread, okay, that, that, that daily intimate relationship. And there's nothing wrong with asking for our desires as long as we make sure we're asking for the right reasons. Uh, and, and again, you might ask for something, somebody else look at that and say, well, that's selfish. But if the reason you're asking and only you and God know is not selfish, pray till, till the cows come home, amen? 
or until the request is answered. Just keep praying. Uh, so, so again, asking for desires is okay. Make sure it's, uh, uh, the reasoning for it is okay. So that's the physical needs. We'll cover the second point here. Number two, we're done. Look at that. Two points. Request for spiritual needs. Obviously, if it's okay to pray for physical needs, is it okay to pray for spiritual needs? Of course. Probably more important, right? Because usually, here's what I find out. Usually, the, the more my spiritual needs are being prayed for and met, the, the fewer problems I seem to have with physical needs, right? Uh, physical issues. Not necessarily health, but you know, other things like that. Uh, so, so request for spiritual needs. What is the request we see given? The first, the first one you see here uh, in verse number uh, three, three or four, uh, or four, verse four, I'm sorry, is to forgive our debts. Forgive our debts. Famous preacher said this in his book, A Call, Call for Prayer. Praying and sinning will never live together in the same heart. Prayer will consume sin or sin will choke prayer. Think about that for just a minute. I can't, it's really, 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 really tough to pray for my physical needs when my spiritual needs are wrong. When my spiritual life is off, okay, it's tough really to ask for the physical needs and expect God to give me what I need. Um, we need God's forgiveness. That's the word we use here, forgive our debts. We need his forgiveness constantly. Now, when you got saved... And you put your faith and trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary and his death and his resurrection. Uh, and, and you put your hope in that as the only means of heaven. What happened to your sins? They're forgiven. Never to be brought up again. Never to be thrown in your face. Never to be, well, you remember when. They're, they're gone. All right, they're forgiven. So, so your sins are already forgiven, right? We, we understand that. Uh, this forgiveness that we have to seek constantly is not to keep our salvation or to you know earn favor to, to continue our salvation, Matthew chapter six verse number twelve, uh, it re- the, the word debt uh, and it's the other the other passage for this uh, it refers to a spiritual debt. What spiritual debt do we all have? We're born with it, sin. How many? How many? I wish I knew the number. I don't even know. But how many people are there out there today uh, that are that are debt gurus trying to get people out of debt? There's some that are legit, and there's some that are not, right? But, but what is a huge problem in our world today? By the way, not just in the, the people of our country, but in our country itself. Debt, right? Debt. And it's detrimental, and, and it hurts. And people are trying to figure out, how do, I, how do I get out of that? Well, think about this. When you're born, you're already in debt, spiritually. It's a sin debt. Uh, verse 14 and 15 of Matthew 6, when it, again, it's talking about the, the model prayer there, it refers to those debts as trespasses, transgressions. Stepping over the line. When we sin, we incur a debt with God. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I should refer to, this, to God this way or not, but you ever, you ever seen the, uh, the, the TV shows where you know, somebody's in debt to the loan shark? And if you don't pay, they're coming after you. They're going to break your arm. Then they're going to break your other arm. They're going to break your kneecaps, right? And before long, <laughs> right? You realize that the debt we owe God if God was the mafia, <laughs> do, do you realize how much trouble we'd all be in? Because we can't pay the debt. Yeah, we, we can't cover the debt. There's not a thing we can do to get out of that debt. I can't raise enough money. I can't be good enough. I can't join enough churches. I can't help a little old lady across. I can't even get dunked in enough baptismal pools to fix this debt. And he is holy. And he is righteous. And I have failed his standard of living because of sin. But... Because he's also just and merciful and loving, he made a way for that sin and that debt to be wiped away. And of course, that was through his son, Jesus Christ, on the, uh, the payment that he made on, on Calvary for our sins. At no cost to us, but at great cost to him. After salvation and that forgiveness of our sin takes place, um, unfortunately, we still sin, don't we? And I know there are churches out there that they, that teach you can reach a point in your life where you don't sin anymore and you reach that sinless perfection. They aren't reading the same Bible I'm reading, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and they must not have the same flesh I have, all right? Uh, we're going to sin, okay? What's the response we should have when we sin? Repentance. Seeking forgiveness. You say, but it's already forgiven. I understand that. I understand that. But 
we still need to go to him and own it like David did in Psalm 51 and say, Lord, I, 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 I've transgressed against you. Because although that sin will not, will not take me out of the family relationship, God the Father, me as the son, it will greatly hinder that relationship. That, that wedge, if you will, is driven in there, and that relationship is not what it should be or could be because of sin. I have to get that forgiven. I have to take care of it. In this model prayer, he gives us the request for forgiveness. I want you to see this. The request for forgiveness immediately follows the request for daily bread. It's right after it. Right after it. Uh, just as we need our, our, our daily food, we need our daily needs met. If you think about it, unless you're super spiritual, we probably all need daily forgiveness. Amen? Uh, we all struggle daily to live for God. Uh, we've got to continually be dependent on God, not just for physical needs, but spiritual needs. Forgive me. Uh, Father, for I have sinned. Um, immediately after the phrase requesting for forgiveness of our debts, Jesus adds a condition in this model prayer. And, he, and he, he adds the thought about God's forgiveness is proportional to our forgiveness. Right? Uh, forgive us our debts as we forgive. The as, that, that's, that, that's that comparison. So what it means is this. His, his forgiveness is proportional, directly related to my forgiveness. Um, think about that for just a minute. <laughs> I ask for forgiveness when I'm indebted to him. What do I do for others? <laughs> what do I do for others? You ever ask somebody to forgive you and they're like, well, I, I heard your apology, but I'm not accepting it. Like, what? I, 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 what am I supposed to do then? I mean, where, where do we go from here, right? I, I've got to forgive. It is. It is. It's on them at that point. But, but, you know, you think about this and... We're, we're really thankful for God's forgiveness, aren't we? Yeah. And if you really are honest with yourself, the amount of forgiveness that's required in our lives and for the large amount of things that we do, and yet we struggle sometimes to forgive somebody because yeah. they let us down. Yeah. They hurt our little feelings. Yeah. They took my position at church. Yeah. Right? Am, am I right? Yeah. We struggle with it sometimes. And if I truly want his forgiveness, and I know he forgives when I ask, but if I truly want his forgiveness, I've got to learn to forgive. There's some conditional things there. Now, God's not going to uh, refuse to, uh, salvation to somebody who hasn't forgiven others. Okay, that's that, that's that first step of salvation. But think about this. Uh, and, and we're not going to lose our salvation if we don't forgive people either. We know that. You can't, you can't lose that. But think about it. Can I grow spiritually? If I'm harboring resentment in my heart towards somebody? You can't. You can't. There's no way I can be right with God and wrong with people. Does that make sense? I, I can't have hatred in my heart for Wayne because he did, the, you know, X and O. Picked the wrong song tonight. and Which he didn't. It was all good. but you know, And say, well... You know, I just, I'll just avoid him. I just won't talk to him. I'll just hold that grudge in my heart and in my life. There's no way I can turn around Sunday morning and say, oh, I'm right with God. I can't wait to. Y'all with me? Now, again, that doesn't mean we have to be perfect because we never will be. But, man, when I, when I, when I sin, I go, I go to him for forgiveness. And when somebody does me wrong, I forgive. I forgive. Um, I, I can't have a right relationship and a right fellowship with God when there's sin in my heart. And, and one of those sins in my heart is not forgiving my fellow brother. Not forgiving man. Uh, when I don't forgive, by the way, think about this. Matthew 5 talks about this a little bit, verse 23, 24. When I don't forgive, God doesn't even want my worship. He craves worship, but not when my heart's wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to get it right. You know, I got to leave my gift at the altar, get it right with the brother before I'm willing to give and worship God. And so think about how important this is to God. Uh, forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. If I hold it, uh, forgiveness from another person. It's going to make it tough to genuinely pray with the right heart. When we forgive, we display an understanding of God's forgiveness in our life that he's extended to us to the point where uh, we reflect that to others. Forgiveness is absolutely necessary to having a right relationship with God. Think about this for a minute. You ever forgiven for some, somebody for something pretty big and somebody else might have said, I can't believe you forgave them. I would, I would, right? Do you, do you realize what that forgiveness teaches? It teaches that I'm modeling God's forgiveness in my life. 
and gives me one more opportunity to represent the Savior in the area of forgiveness. So, so that's, the, that's the first thing spiritually is forgive our debts. The second thing, oops, wrong button. Second thing you see is this. Uh, we're asked, don't lead us in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, now, because God is holy, God does not tempt us with sin. And you can read that in James chapter 1 if you want to follow up there. He does test us, though. Uh, sin only comes from Satan in our sinful nature. It does not come from God. Okay? So, so we can't say, what does he say, when, you, when you're tempted, don't say I'm tempted of God, because uh, God doesn't tempt man, all right? Uh, he does test us. This phrase here, as we look at it in, in uh, Luke chapter 11 there, that phrase means we're asking God to shepherd us away from the things that make it easy for us to sin. Does that make sense? Keep me from situations that I might recklessly put myself in that could lead to a temptation to cause me to sin. In other words, guide my steps. Keep me in check, God. <laughs> uh, you, you shepherd me to where I need to be going in my life so I don't take the wrong turn. Because if I take the wrong turn, it's going to put me in a pathway of temptation. Um, I often, when I think about that, that thought, um, I often go back to the Old Testament, I think of Joseph. You remember Joseph? And uh, sold in slavery by his brothers, you know, told his dad he was dead and all that. Went to Potiphar's house, rose up in the house, you know, number one in command after, after Potiphar, right? And uh, the wife ended up, you know, trying to get him to, to lie with her. He said no and said no and said no. And finally she grabbed his coat and accused him and went to prison for something he didn't do. I often say this, uh, and again, I can't fault Joseph because he, he, he did say no, all right? He did say no. He, he's... A great, great, great man of God, if you really think about his life and, and what God did with him and through him. But the challenge I'd give us is this day, is today is this. If I knew she was in the house alone, I'm not going to go in the house with her. See what I'm saying? Now, again, I'm not saying I would do better than Joseph. I'd probably fail miserably, okay? But, but think about that. If I can avoid the situation that leads to the temptation, how much more successful will I be in saying no to the temptation? I might not get hit with it at all. And so that's what this thought about lead us not to temptation is. It's, it's shepherd me away from those situations, God. Shepherd me away. You remember Job? In Job, all the, uh, all the things and all the obstacles that God put in his path, it doesn't mean God's not going to test you. All the things that God did for him. But Job's like, you know what? Don't give me the attitude of my friends or my wife. Keep me, keep me right with you through this, God. God is holy without sin. He desires us to be holy. He doesn't play games with us. He doesn't harass us trying to get us, oh, can I get them to sin? He doesn't do that. Uh, but he does permit testing. He allows testing. Uh, but he also promises, again, his presence will go through us through all those experiences as well. Uh, God allows testing and trials in our life uh, to test our faith. I know this is a hard thing to pray for, but you ever pray, Lord, stretch my faith? Because <laughs> here's the problem. You start praying that way and he will. He will. And he puts you through things you don't necessarily want to go through. What is he doing? He's testing your faith. Uh, under intense pressure, it's easy for us to respond sinfully. It really is. But God says, listen, in James 1, 5 and 6, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God to give to all men liberally, and it breath not, and it shall be given him. So he also says this, I'll give you the wisdom to help you avoid those things. But we've got to ask for it. We've got to ask for it. Uh, during Job's testing, again, those sinful attitudes of his friends uh, never rubbed off on Job. Job's like, you know, I want to avoid that. And God gave him grace to resist those things. Unbelievers, it's natural for them to obey sin. They're obeying their, their father of this world, all right? The believers who have the Holy Spirit in their life, uh, we have a source that helps us resist the lure of sin, the Holy Spirit of God. It's important for us to keep our focus on God and obey his will in order to resist. James chapter 4 talks about resisting, right? I've got to keep my focus on him and him alone. And, and so when I'm requesting these spiritual needs, yes, God, I, I want forgiveness. Help me to forgive. Oh, and by the way, God, shepherd me away from these, these, these instances, these places, these people, these things or whatever that might cause me an, uh, an area of temptation that I might say yes to. Help me to avoid them, God. Uh, if we'll surrender to God's will in the area of prayer, and our desire will always be to bring him glory even in our prayer, um, then that will help us to provide context for what to pray for. Does that make sense? If, if my goal through prayer is to do His will and to glorify Him, then that provides the context of what to ask for, whether it be physical or spiritual. Uh, God provides those physical and spiritual needs, and we're thankful for that. 
but I've got to be willing to allow him to be king of my life. I've got to surrender and submit to his, his kingship personally. Uh, he, he possesses the power to grant my requests. I've got to learn to submit to his will so that I ask for the request properly. Does that make sense? And so the, the, the model prayer he gives his disciples is full of just key and full of thoughts on here's how you should pray. And I hope as we looked at it, I know it's been several weeks between, but I hope as we looked at it, it was able to help us just a little bit understand here, here's why to pray, here's how to pray, and here's what the meaning of those words that he presented to his disciples helps us in the area of prayer. Now, we're going we're gonna to finish our series. That's the end of this series for uh, Teach Us to Pray. Uh, next Wednesday, Lord willing, and I'm not in the hospital or something worse, uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to start a brand new series, and let me see if I can get it to go, okay? We're going to look at the book of Esther. How many of you are familiar with Esther? A bunch of you, good. You can, provi- you can pronounce that title however you would like. God is nowhere or God is now here. And you, uh, you, can, you can look at that however you want to. We're going to find out it's actually God is now here. This is one of, the, I believe it's the only book in the Bible. God's name is not mentioned once. Not once. But every chapter you can see God's hand at work and God's providence at work. And so we're going to pick up a chapter one. Uh, I think I think if everything works out right, I'm try, going to try to cover a chapter each week uh, and get through some things. And uh, so we'll uh, we'll look into that starting next week in the book of Esther. So if you want to study up, I think it's only ten chapters. Um, read up on it if you'd like to, or read the first one at least, and you'll know where we'll be next week. All right? You might be able to fill in the blanks before I say them, or the ones that I forget to say. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we get them all filled in tonight. Amen. All right. Any questions, thoughts, comments on prayer as we close it out? All right. Let's pray then and we'll be dismissed tonight. Father, we thank you tonight for your love. Uh, Thank you for the lessons we've had, Lord, on prayer. And we've covered a a lot of ground, really, and uh, spent a few weeks even here on this uh, model prayer that you gave to your disciples. Lord, I pray that you'll just uh, help us to glean the truths, help us to glean the thoughts that Scripture points out. Uh, May we truly be people of prayer, knowing that you hear an answer. And, Lord, may we always pray in your will and to bring you glory. I know, uh, Lord, I pray, and that will uh, help us to ask for the right things, help us to keep proper perspective in the area of prayer, I pray. Uh, Father, we ask you tonight as we uh, close our service, we go to our houses, we pray for safety as we travel. And, God, we do ask you to bring us back again uh, this weekend, Lord. We pray that you will uh, bless all the festivities and the activities, Lord, and the services on Sunday. And, Lord, just meet with us and do what only you can do, we pray. Ask, uh, help us, Lord, to, uh, to uh, live for you this week or the remainder of it and point people towards the Savior, we pray. We love you, and we thank you for all that you do and will continue to do in our lives. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Goodbye. God bless you. Shake at least three hands on your way out. <laughs>